Hey everybody, my name is Ija Hussain. I'm a developer architect uh, in a company called Content and Cloud. We're based in UK. Here's my uh, contact details in LinkedIn or Twitter. Please get in touch if you have any questions. So today we're talking about a SPFX web part and uh, what I build is I, um, so I wanted to basically uh, see how can we use OpenAI uh, into our SPFX web part. So one of the, one of the case or, or the idea was to basically we can uh, we can ask the question in our natural language and see if we use the help of open ai we get the response we wanted uh, from our it could be any ai it could could, it could oh, from our apis could be io devops api could be graph api so the idea is to basically you ask your question in natural language you don't have to basically click on the button or specific sending command to your api let's use the api to basically give you the parameters to call your function that's what we're talking about today so now if you go next so uh, so I used in this sample, I used the open AI function calling feature to determine the user in request and intention. And then uh, once we we know what's user wanted uh, and that's we are going to using this uh, open AI function calling feature to determine that, then we can use those um, uh, uh, response from the open AI and then going to call our own uh, API or could be uh, in, in this sample I'm calling Azure DevOps API. So another thing we're doing is um, uh, in terms of the, some tasks I'm doing in this sample, I'm asking for some recent tasks, I'm asking for bugs, I'm so asking for some, give me some commits, uh, recent commits into a specific project and, uh, and we're doing some natural language processing of the user query. So what is, uh, before we get into the jam, so we look into the, what is function calling feature. So function calling feature is basically is the ability for these models to understand and generate JSON object for a specific function calls based on the user query. So it's same, so you basically, like for example, you imagine you want to call, say, hey, who are my, um, who are my top customers kind of thing. So once you pass this request to OpenAI, OpenAI send you the, uh, look into this request, send you a some parameters if you're able to generate some parameters and say, and if based on the, you know, uh, the functions you have defined as a part, part of your prompts. And then from there, OpenAI will understand which function in your API you wanted to call and what are the parameters are. So, and then once you understand, okay, once your system understand that this is your function, is a required function, then you can make a normal API request to get your data. So we'll look into more detail in a minute. So at the end, what it does is basically, um, once you make your API request, uh, then you can again call the OpenAI again. If you have a, if you have a, for example, a, a, com, a, requ um, a the API send back a, a large amount of data or a huge text, then you can still use API, API open API part of that uh, flow to further summarize that uh, uh, the data before you go back to the user. So we'll, if you look at this, how to use this function, uh, function calling feature. So there are five steps. One, call open AI with user query. So we call the model, we pass the query, and this, uh, it, and, and we also pass the function parameters, which we're going to define beforehand. And then, and if the and then model will generate a JSON kind of object because we are passing our functions, API functions, parameters as well, uh, or the definitions. Then the OpenAI will basically, based on your uh, uh, the, the the definitions you are passing, it will send you a JSON object saying, "Hey, I I know this is the op function in your API you wanted to call, and here is the parameter which I extracted from the user request." Now, and then once you got that, you just basically use that pass JSON function and call your function. So once you got that JSON object, you simply basically extract those um, parameters from the response and call your API. Could uh, In this case, we, I'm calling a DevOps API. And then if needed, that's optional. Uh, you have a two option, either if you think, if, if you still feel the response from my API is still quite large and 
Uh, you still want to summarize by the open AI. You're still going to go ahead and make a, another request with the response. And then the open AI will also summarize again, and then you go back to the user. So that's basically five step function when we're using the function calling feature in open AI. So let's look into the demo. Uh, so. Right, so I have this um, DevOps project, which is a, a one organization, which is each stash of send, and then I have a, a project called O3C. And then within the O3C, I've got a couple of wrappers, so all the O3C SPFX web parts uh, and some other repos as well. So if I go and refresh this, let me just refresh this just quickly. And uh, if you see, if you noticed, uh, I would because I already configured this. Uh, my DevOps organization is auto selected in each as a send, but if you edit this, then you will see a drop down. It, uh, you might have like a multiple organizations uh, configured in DevOps, so you will see in drop down here, and then you can select, select which one you wanted to uh, uh, basically use in in that sample. And I think the the sample which I've um, uh, using the pull request, you will also see a, another field here for the open eye key uh, as well. So you can configure here in the property pane. So let's do a, um, ask some question to the DevOps and see if we can get some answers. So first of all, I'm going to ask uh, this question, say, uh, show me all tasks assigned to me in O3C project, because this is where the, the key is. If you, it's going to translate this into a, a some it's going to generate some JSON object, the open AI, and then it's going to give me, hey, I think you're looking for your sign task. And this is the project in your in your organization. So it's going to basically extract those parameters and give me this is the function you want to call with these parameters. And then I'm going to go ahead and call the parameters and then I'll return back to the user. And this is where basically, you know, your interface could you could you could build with any any way you like. So if you click on it, it takes you to the task in the DevOps. And then um, if less some some other uh, task in there, so I say show me uh, bugs assigned to me in all some. So if you're looking for a bug, it's going to give you different parameters. So I'm going to call a different API endpoint and pull back some bugs assigned to me. And then if, you, um, if you're looking for some recent commits, let's first now give me some recent commits. And in, the, in this case, if you look at the question, I'm asking you, Give me the commits, but give me because you have to specify which repo you want commit from, right? So you, this is the repo I want commit from, and this is the O3. So you have your question has to be specific uh, because this is your, based on your question and based on the um, parameters you passed is going to make judgment which function you want API function you should call, and it is the parameter. So as soon as it passes, it's going to basically bring me in this repo all these uh, the recent commit. Basically, you can see I've added a. Uh, 42 minutes ago, I've added this commit, etc. So if I click on probably here, so it take me to that particular commit, and you can see uh, the changes and etc. Right. So I think there's another one I've added is let's see. I don't know what the response going to, but let's add some random question. What's the weather like in London today? I is thinking. Right. So okay. So. I cannot. I can only help you with the task bug related to project. I don't have any sort of the weather in London. So this is like I already have something. Like if you don't get any, if you get random questions, so please give this uh, give this source of answer. Like because you're only trained to uh, respond with the bugs, task, and the commit. So you don't have any information in this one. So let me go back to the quickly code. Um, so in here, we first of all go to. Uh, so you see here, I have another field which I was talking about. So you will have a open AI key so you can define in there in your property pane. And this is the um, property pane async drop down for the organization. So this will be up uh, if you go here, it's, uh, it will be auto populated based on your permissions so that you can choose which uh, organization you wanted to use. And if you go to the domain here, so let me go back to. So we have a, a React use hook, which is basically called the open AI. So when if someone send me a message, uh, if I have a, uh, so, so then what's going to happen is I'm going to call this guy and this call, calling the two things. One, the message 
I received and then the function. So let me take you to the function before I go to the message. So this is the constant we're defining. So this is the key thing here. Basically, I'm defining my parameters. Um, uh, so I'm, uh, basically, this is the get assigned task is a function I wanted uh, uh, and the parameters are it, what it does. Get all the active tasks assigned to me and then object which I'm passing. This is the project name. I need the project name as a parameter so you can define any parameters you like uh, and then a description of each parameters basically. And then another function I've got get assigned bugs and description and the parameters you needed. You, you need to define what do you need to call the API? So you need to define those parameters here and then what open API will do is, is try to extract that information from the message which user has entered and then based on uh, the selection is going to make up. You might have like a huge list of functions and then he's going to say use this function and here are the parameters. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm passing this to call open AI hook and my uh, the message user has entered and once I get the response, I'm going to go and process the response. So in response, I'm checking. Uh, so the stop is the one which is the last one. So if the the case is stopped, that means he doesn't have anything else. So you at this point you can go back to user and show to the message, or which is I was uh, when I was saying is optional because you don't have to summarize the result all the time. You can basically go back to user at any point you like. So for example, if user if uh, and this is the function call. Uh, is, is I'm going I'm extracting the name of the function I wanted uh, what open AI spitting out all the argument of the function based off the user request of uh, the query and then once I know what function name is given me based on the uh, the the constant I have provided so in here let's suppose get assigned task if I go inside uh, I'm calling this function call function passing the name arguments and then if you what's inside going here so here i'm doing get assigned task i'm taking the function function argument you could see i'm because uh, i'm expecting the project name here in this that's what i define as a parameter so if i got the project name from the uh, from the open ai i'm calling my api get assigned task and all you're doing basically passing my organization name and the project and you know giving uh, getting my uh, task from the devops uh, the same goes with the other one. So if I've called this function bugs or commits based on that is going to go and uh, grab the result from the DevOps API. So if I go back to here, so once it's, I've got the results and then I can simply show function result, I can simply show DevOps task results so I can break at this point. I don't have to kind of go into the loop again. So I can go show DevOps task uh, and then set the messages. Uh, which is the like um, the type of array uh, I'm, I'm using or the chat messages. And once all the chat messages are there, updated chat messages, I'm using uh, uh, there is a comp uh, uh, this is a AP, uh, the react check element so for all the chat uh, component which uh, the list chat list and etc all built by react check element so i'm passing this all the uh, messages to that component and then it's basically rendering that for me uh, that's all from my side so if you have any quest question please let me know